Last week, Jago got a new engine and Rob talked a little bit about why we chose that particular engine and why we replaced it. We did have a few dramas in the end, but this week we're off and we're doing our sea trials, heading straight up to Orpheus Island, check out the giant clams and then onto the beautiful reef. Well, we're out of there. We've left, but we're going to spend a week doing sea trials with the new engine and then we'll come back in. That sounds good. It's very smooth. Very yeah. Smooth. Nice. Sounds really good. Do you feel like you got more power? Okay. And we've got a clean bottom, so that's got to help. Two no, I just wanted here. to see, make sure it was making its maximum revs. Oh yeah. Day two, we've got to keep the revs up uh, for this new engine and we're doing 8.6 knots and we've got a new propeller on as well and well, yeah but we're flying along and we've got to get up 30 hours at least along these islands we'll end up in Cairns if we keep going this rate and we'll have to turn around and go back. So Brad's going to then do a service on the engine at 30 plus hours uh, before we head north and head out to Indonesia. Um, but so I'm going to go up to Orpheus and dive over these clams. Okay we've just picked up a mooring ball and we're at Orpheus and the research boat is just over here and there's like a research station down on the beach. Do you know the history of the clam farm or the clam nursery? Um, it's a couple of years since we've been here but I'm pretty sure it was built as a, fa a farm yeah. to export the clam meat. Okay, so I've but googled that and I didn't, I don't think that's true. Really? Yeah, all I saw was that they there's about three over 300 clams there now, giant clams, started in the 80s because there was poaching going on on the Great Barrier Reef and they were worried that they would become extinct. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought there was a lot more juicier story than that, but <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anything on the internet about that. I thought it was, who told us that? I thought it was the sign, the, the, the research station. We should go ask them. Yeah. Get the gloss on it. Find out the facts. Yes. Instead of just Googling, Googling it. it. Yeah. A lot of bullshit on the internet. <laughs> let's go and find out. <laughs> oh. So I also read on the internet that the clams had been, some had been moved because of overcrowding, that it was killing the clams, so that they had separated and it was a bit patchy and that's why it was patchy because these clams would be moved to other areas um, so we'll find out about that too. Oh yeah, here they are, here. Yeah, yeah. Here's a quick patch of them, just to get through here. It's all right, remember? Yeah. Oh, there was, wasn't even enough room for a piece of coral in between. Yeah. And I believe some of them, yeah, were sent to Magnetic Island. There's a snorkeling trail over on Maggie Island. Okay, have a look. Maybe that's why they had to thin them out. Because when we were here a couple of years ago, they were it was massively overcrowded, and maybe it was killing them. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I read. Yeah, it was too overcrowded and they had to start separate them. But also you had heard that there was some sort of 
marketing that they were going to do with them for food. Oh, that's when they first did it. Yeah, well, apparently there was that, but that never took off. Yeah, um, they couldn't get a market. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, look at these. <laughs> We're just drifting over the top. It's getting really shallow now. Low tide. And the tide's going out. Okay, can you get off the oar, please? <laughs> yeah, the research centre is down there. It's coming along these rocks, and you see like these rocks up here, like a wall of rocks, just sort of off from there. Okay, we just found out all the facts from the scientists at the research boat and we went to the wrong spot. So as you head down here towards the research centre, there is a big rock wall. Head for that and it's just in line with that. Yeah, it's right, it's really close in. If you go further north of that, they're like patches, which is where we were the second time. The very first time we came here two years ago, um, there was mass amounts of them and they are still there. The bulk of the clams are found closer to the beach and up against the rock wall. It all began in 1986 by Dr. Rick Braley, a marine scientist. The plan was to create a commercial joint venture with restaurants. Unfortunately, it never took off. And in 1990, the farm was closed. Some of the clams were rehomed to Magnetic Island and in 2013, 14 of them were placed on the snorkel trail. In 1992, Sydney Morning Herald and the New York Times had published an article saying that the breeding program was so successful that the Navy had been called in to remove 90,000 clams from the overcrowding. Some have died because there is overcrowding, but they're all there. So that was very good. Solve that problem. All these rumours going around. It's all false. There is a walk that we did up here and it's a stone hut and it's a shearer shed. So go check that out. And also at the research station, they do tours and education. And all you got to do is give them a call and try to get a group of you together and they will book a time. I think it's like $10 per person to do it. Oh uh, yeah, the phone number. Yeah, there is a mark on Navionics apparently that he said you can find their phone number. All the info. We've just left the clam nursery at Orpheus and we are heading out to the reef. It's out from Townsville and we need to get as much motoring in as we can. So we're heading out to sea. And there's a lot of reef out here that we're going to go check out. Get right down that longitude and latitude of that mooring ball. Alright, I'm going into that. Well, we found the mooring ball just after we put the latitude and longitude into the chart plotter. We looked up and there it was. Got a beautiful rainbow over here. And we've got squalls all around us out here. Yeah, and this is interesting when you're ra racing, you want to be looking for this stuff when there's clouds, but when there's a squall and it's raining, you can actually see what's happening here. See this squall here, mm -hmm. which is going from south east to northwest, is the way this cloud is going. Mm -hmm. Look at the leading edge, the leading edge of the squall, and look at, see how the rain's going like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the That's wind, cool. the wind is much, much stronger on the leading edge of it. Mm -hmm. Look here, see how the rain's going straight down yep. in the middle? So there's less wind yep. in here than before the squall. See, it goes a sharp angle yep. and then it sort of goes like that. So if you're wanting wind, you need to yeah, go when, off to the... Well, that's what I mean. When, you, when, you, when you're racing, mm -hmm. and you're, you want to be looking at where the cloud's coming. If you get on the leading edge of a cloud, it's coming across your path where you're trying to race. Mm -hmm. You want to be trying to head towards the leading edge of that if you want more breeze, if it's a bit fickle. Right? Mm -hmm. but, but then you want to skirt around it. You don't want to be in the middle of it mm -hmm. because there's going to be probably nothing in the middle of it in most scenarios. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Or at, at, the, at the very least, it'll be less wind. 
So this reef is called Lodgestone. It's about 37 nautical miles out from Townsville. And it is stunning. Not getting as much roll at the moment because it's low tide. You can see all these bobbies starting to come up. Um, but when it is high tide, it's very rolly out here. Next stop is Keeper Reef. It's about I don't know, eight and a half nautical miles from where we just came from. Two mooring balls on Keeper Reef, one here and one just over there. Just left Keeper Reef and we are doing a flyby to Grub Reef and then on to John Rule Reef. Is that going full throttle now, is it? That's full. <laughs> It feels like it's really working. It is, yeah. yeah. We're doing 8.5. Panama, out at about 3,500. Not a time to be idling around. Yeah. How many hours do we have to do that for? That's for the first 50 hours. 50 hours, okay. Yep, cool. Okay, we found a mooring ball. It's not where we thought they were. I thought they were going to be out here on the fringe of the reef. And it's way over there in that reef. It's kind of like a lagoon. So here we go again navigating through sketchy reefs with nothing on Navionics. Just coming into John Brewer Reef. This is where they have the sculptures, the museum, 16 metres down. John Brewer Reef is about five hours sail from Magnetic Island, which is about 33 nautical miles. clear that is but when you come in here it's a lagoon which I didn't think it was you need to make sure you pick up that mooring ball because you don't have much room for error they're just reef all around you and bombies everywhere yeah it's very blue water isn't it I'm ready let's go have a look My fish in the well, I'm about to cook the fish in the oven. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Video. Okay, this is it. Look at that for a fish. Delicious. Yeah, that's what, what we're having. You, what do you call this, love? <laughs> it's like the castle. Fish, <laughs> love. But it's what you've yeah. done with it. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> oh, look at this. Right on. Look at that. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> Please, some for me. Yeah. That looks pretty darn good. He's impressed. <laughs> I'm seriously impressed. <laughs> yeah. This morning, we're taking a very short dinghy ride over to the Museum of Underwater Art. We don't have dive tanks, so we're just going to free dive. Okay, so confirmed they're both uh, for smaller vessels. Uh, probably too small for ours. Ours is a 17 metres. And these are only 10 meter holdings. And there's two of them. So it's good if you're a bit smaller. 
Yeah, and nine for a multi-hole. I found it. <laughs> This is the main structure. It is the coral greenhouse designed by Jason DeClaire Taylor. Just one of his pieces of art. This is the world's longest underwater art structure. Scuba gear. Yeah. It's well, a bit hard to free dive and hold your breath that long for us anyway. Yeah. It's um Yeah, we can get down there, but you can't spend a real time looking around. No, unless you're a good free diver of course. Um but it would be amazing. So bring your tanks and yeah, just anchor up in here. Well, it wasn't real clear today either. No. But there's we just found another mooring ball yeah, as cool. well. We're heading back to Maggie for the night and then on to Townsville and our drawers have fallen out. It's so rough out here. And the wind is supposed to kick in tomorrow so we had to leave the reef. Still running in this engine, we've got another five hours to go. But it's just really, there's some really steep waves out here and we're going to Windward. It's really rolly. And I'm glad to have a seasick It's really uncomfortable. These waves are not that big there, but they're really close together. Mm. And the angle we're on is pretty shitty, but we've got to keep the motor loaded up so we can't even motor sail. No. And if we were sailing through this, we'd be just a piece of cake. Yeah. by today because tomorrow it's going to be blowing and then off to, to uh, Townsville to have the engine all checked and serviced. That's the plan. Just coming into the Townsville Marina to have our final check on our engine. Fingers crossed everything's good and we can leave and head to Cairns. How's it looking down there? Yeah? Provisioning and Brad's doing his final checks. How's he going in there? He's going good yeah, so far. He hasn't done the hard bit yet. No. Oh. He's doing all the easy jobs first, I know. Fair enough. I can't blame him for that. He's a legend, this guy. Just roll out one of them back a little bit. Here Brad and his team are using a laser shaft alignment. Rob has talked a little bit about this and how important it is in our last video. But look at this, we're on Jago. I feel like I'm in the restaurant from our boat. What are you gonna order? <laughs> Tonight is our last night here in Townsville and tomorrow is an early start. So I'm hoping we all feel okay in the morning. But we're then on to Cairns and a few nice stops on the way and hopefully all downwind sailing. <laughs> 